Hi, my name is Devin Andrade. I work at Tink Media and I write Podstack newsletter. Hey, podcast besties. Welcome back to the show dedicated to making your podcast the best it can be. I'm Courtney Kosak, your BFF in helping you grow and monetize your show. And we've got another bestie on the show today. We've got Devin Andrade, and she is from Tink Media, and they absolutely crush it on the podcast marketing side. So we discuss the creative side of podcast promotion and marketing lessons she's picked up from working at Tink, including a really great cross promo example. Plus, Devin shares her top tip for indie podcasters trying to grow their shows, how to make your content more accessible, some of her favorite recent podcast discoveries, and more. But first, let's get to know Devin's podcasting origin story. So before I actually got into podcasting, I was more just in digital content in general. I really liked video production, not so much like film, but just videos for the internet. And through the programs I went through in college and then the job I got right after that, it was a lot of just digital media production. And I started listening to podcasts a lot. And I thought, this is another storytelling avenue that I want to explore. So I started producing podcasts for the college that I was working at and getting more and more into it. I did a little bit of teaching at the college for it. And then I started coming across the work that like Lauren and Ariel were doing as far as like marketing and this other side of podcasting. Uh And I realized like I love the creative side of podcasting. I love making podcasts. I love audio storytelling. But there's a lot of people that are really good at that. And there's a lot of shows that need support Mm -hmm. getting found by audiences. So maybe it makes more sense for me to switch my focus on helping those shows grow, helping them find their audiences. And then I can keep the creative stuff for little projects I want to do on the side. But I felt like marketing could be the way that I could help support podcasters in a bigger way than just becoming another producer. I think that would still be really fun to do. But I just, I don't know, all the stuff that I was learning just from like listening to Lauren and Ariel. I was like, this seems like it could be really fun and still connected to this thing that I love uh-huh. without being the only way I thought I could pursue it before. So yes. that was kind of my path. Totally. That's so smart. I love that you took this other path and the way that Lauren and Ariel do it it is creative. It is as creative as like making a podcast. And you get to do that sometimes in your job. I've just been listening to Pod At Me. It's (laughs) such a cute show. So tell the besties a little bit about that show and then how they can get involved and, you know, submit to be featured. Oh my goodness. Pod At Me is like one of the most fun things I get to do in my job um, because Lauren had the idea to start a podcast hotline so that you could call in and get a podcast recommendation. We put a new show on there every weekday. And once we started it, and once I started hearing the voicemails we were getting, they were making us all so happy to hear people talking about podcasts that they love that they were listening to. And I was like, these need to be heard. These need to be shared in some way. So I built out this script for it. I got into my closet recording booth. And I was like, I'm just going to try this and just send it to Lauren and see what she thinks. And then we sent it to the team. We're all like, this is really fun. Let's go with it. And then as we've gotten more recordings, we've done more episodes. It's kind of the thing we do once we get enough voicemails, we put out another episode. But honestly, I have so much fun hearing, (laughs) one, hearing people talk about podcasts they're listening to, even if they're doing self-promo. I love that too, because Uh hearing the creators talk about their shows is just as good. And I get to be, I try to like channel this kind of cheesy radio personality like I pretend that it's a live radio show and it's sorry it's really not I don't want to spoil the magic but that's like the persona I'm going for when I'm recording it and I just I love the team for indulging that side (laughs) I love that yeah you know what when I was listening to it there was a few that were self-promo on there but It is fun hearing them talk about it. Or even like Heidi went on there and was giving like her PR perspective. And it's like, yeah, she totally knows all the details about that show. Like she should be talking about and pitching that show. So it is fun in that way too. So people can call in with recommendations or 
feature their own show or like you were saying at the end of this episode, like you could even call in and be like, I'm looking for this podcast. Yeah, honestly, we will take, we love talking about podcasts with anybody. And I think some people, when they hear about the show, they're maybe a little bit hesitant to call in because they think they're going to have to actually talk to somebody. Yeah, But (laughs) you don't have to. You'll just like hear our little message that is whatever show we're talking about that day. And then you'll get the option to leave a message after the beep, just like a normal voicemail. And we do add the disclaimer that if you do leave a message, it might get included in the show. And so it's an easy way for people to like, in their own time, in their own space, talk about their show. And I would love if people call in and say, I'm looking for a show like this. What can you recommend? Because then it's going to make the call-in show even more interactive and we're going to have even more fun with it. So I hope we do kind of build up that relationship with our quote-unquote callers. Uh, But yeah, I think the biggest thing is people getting past the idea that they're going to have to talk to some stranger because like, None of us need to do that all the time. You just call and tell us what you're listening to. It's casual. People are so freaked out by phones these days. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, you could call in, talk about your show, and then say what show you're looking for. You could do double duty with it if you wanted to, besties. I'm just giving you a tip. <laughs> yes, we love it. So besties, you can call one eight four four pod at me to leave your message. And I recommend making yourself a little outline before you call in case you get flustered and just to make sure you're hitting all of your main talking points. It is a really cute show and it's an excellent way to get a quick earned media win for your show. So, okay, like we said, what you guys do at Tink is very creative in terms of podcast marketing. So what have you learned about podcast marketing so far and what have been like your biggest lessons that have inspired you? I think the biggest thing that I come back to after all the different shows that I've worked on, all the different campaigns and clients, is that your audience contains more multitudes than you might think it does. So your marketing probably needs to contain multitudes as well. And that goes for the type of maybe other shows you're reaching out to, but also just where you're reaching out to promote your show. So what kind of shows are you partnering with? What kind of newsletters are you partnering with? How are you using social media, not necessarily in a way to grow, but to engage either with your community or engage with your existing listeners? You know, like there's no silver bullet. There's no one path to growth in podcasting. Mm -hmm. But if you're open to trying a lot of things and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't and working with other podcasts, one makes your marketing more fun and Mm -hmm. makes you feel like you're part of something bigger than just your show. And like, those are listeners. Those are the people that you need to reach first, right? Turning somebody from a non-listener to a listener is really hard to do. But if you can reach listeners, then that is your target audience, wherever they might be. So they might be in a podcast app. They might be reading a podcast newsletter. They might be listening to a podcast. And they could also just be reading some other kind of newsletter, especially a newsletter that tends to recommend content. Mm -hmm. They are used to receiving a recommendation and probably acting on that. So that right there is gold, especially if it has to do with the niche or subject matter of your show. As Devin mentioned, it's a lot easier to turn an existing podcast listener onto your show than a non-listener. But Tink's actually working on an initiative called Adopt a Listener. And it is Adopt a Listener Month right now. And the whole goal is to get more newbies into podcasting. And guess what? you can help. Do you know someone who has never listened to a podcast? It might sound bananas to you and me, but those people are out there. And if we want the podcast industry to grow, we need to turn these non-podcast listeners into podcast listeners. Tink Media thinks so too. And that's why this April they are launching Adopt a Listener. They are asking you to find someone who says podcasts aren't my thing and give them a thoughtful recommendation, something that's going to get them hooked. Podcast Bestie is a proud supporter of Adopt a Listener. Go to tinkmedia.co slash adopt to sign up. That is tinkmedia.co slash adopt to sign up, find resources, and learn how you can get involved. There is a link in the episode description. Is there like an example that sticks out in your head of like a really good podcast to podcast partnership or cross promo that you've seen? Oh, a really good cross promo. I mean, I really want to talk about a 
newsletter partnership that yeah. recently came across because this was an example of just the content being such a good match. It was for a climate show called Climate Vision 2050, and they use fiction and they use nonfiction to tell the story of what the planet could look like in 2050. And so I was reaching out to climate newsletters, and there was one that um, uses a lot of art and poetry and writing to express what's happening to our climate. And as soon as they listened, they were, like, inspired to write poems based on the episodes oh. and shared those in their newsletter. And for me, that is the biggest example of kind of thinking beyond where you think your podcast might fit. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about the same thing. Clearly, there's alignment in the type of way you're speaking about this issue. And then for it to resonate that strongly with that other person, I, uh, like, the they whole team. to write poetry? Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, that's amazing. The whole team was so excited by that because, like, that's how you know your show is hitting with your target audience and, like, with other potential listeners. So, like, that's that one's, like, top of mind because I happened pretty recently. And I just, like, I can't get over how powerful the reaction was for that. Yeah, that's great. So given everything you've learned, you know, at your time at Tink, what's your best advice to indie podcasters trying to grow their shows? I think if you're in the indie space and you are really committed to growing your show, really become part of the podcasting space. So I think sometimes as a podcaster, it can feel like the podcast is just your vehicle for delivering your content or your message. Mm -hmm. But if you want to grow, I think you have to understand a little bit more about that medium and that community and industry that exists around it, because that's how you're going to learn how to collaborate, how to harness it, what's really going on with the shows that are growing and what are they doing? Because any show at any size can grow if it's using all the same tactics that the bigger shows are using, mm -hmm. minus money. I know money could be the variable there, oh, yeah. but the <laughs> access the access to collaboration and partnerships can exist no matter what, because there will always be shows that you could partner with. Mm -hmm. And there will always be audiences that you haven't reached yet. So even if you feel like, oh, this other show is too small or too different, there could be a listener at least one in there that doesn't know your show yet that could be interested. So all of those options could have returns. The thing is, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And you just kind of have to respect that journey of it. And I think when you're partnering with more podcasts, they get it too. So you feel a little bit less like, I'm the only one struggling here. I'm the only one caught up in this. I can't grow. When you're working with other podcasts to grow, like we all get it. We're all mm -hmm. in this together, mm -hmm. and we're all growing together. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like, become part of the industry, learn from all these resources, and then you'll start trying things and learning how to grow your show. Totally. And, like, you know, those bigger shows, yes, they have money, which buys people to hold your hand through, like, feed drops and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but really all you need, you know, you can reverse engineer it. You can go to an awesome wondery feed drop that you saw that you thought was really good and like look at the transcript for that and like do the same thing so that's that's totally I think spot on I know it can feel really overwhelming when you're first doing it especially and you're right the biggest thing that money will give you is resources to help do all of this mm -hmm. and we're trying to help support that effort at tank because we're doing this thing right now on podcast marketing magic about 52 weeks of podcast growth and we're trying to design that in a way that we know how busy podcasters are and we know how overwhelming it could be to dedicate more time to growing your show so what's one Thing you could do every week that builds up your marketing throughout the year so that you get that ball rolling without it being so overwhelming, without it costing you a lot of time or money. Yes. Yes. Everyone should check that out. I want to tell you about our sponsor, Mopod. Mopod is a high-powered way to promote your show that all the big networks are using. Seriously, it's already trusted by industry giants like Condé Nast, iHeartMedia, and the HubSpot Podcast Network. And that's because it works. And it's not just for the big guys. 
I have found that Mopod Boost is perfect for indie podcasters, and it's been my favorite paid advertising experiment to date. You know this if you are a paid subscriber for Podcast Bestie. Mopod Boost Self Serve is a native programmatic advertising platform that puts your podcast episodes in front of targeted listeners wherever they happen to be on the web. And that's what I love about it because if you're advertising on a podcast player, yes, you're reaching people who are interested in podcasts, but they might not be interested in your topic. And with Mopod, you're reaching people that are definitely specifically targeted to be interested in what your show is about. So to me, it's been a better fit of listener. And it's simple and super easy to get started. Seriously, it takes like five minutes. And not only that, but you can try it for just a hundred bucks. You're going to see the bump in the first couple days. Maybe you're trying to reach a download goal or you feel like you're podcasting into the void and you want to find some of those well-targeted listeners that are really going to appreciate and engage with your show. If you're on a budget and you're interested in growing your show in a real way that you can like see I think you're going to like this. And if you are a bestie, you get 10% off with the link in the description. So you are definitely going to want to check that out. 10% off link in the description. So you listen to just a shit ton of shows. (laughs) I'm sure for work. So tell us about your favorite recent shows and what you're listening to these days. Oh, right now, I feel like one show that has really stood out to me recently was Good Sport by Jody Afrigan, because I love when a show, even if it's talking about something that I might not be super interested in, but it does a really good job of adding storytelling into the structure of the show. So I already kind of really enjoy sports, but the approach that Jody is taking for it is that sports reflect a lot of our culture and our world and what's going on and I love that kind of angle in a show so I feel like I'm learning way more about the world than a specific sport and it's one of those shows that I didn't expect to like that much I knew I liked his work I knew I would like the topic but it's really sticking out to me as I want to tell more people about it oh I love that anything else oh Gosh, I feel like there's probably so many. I always go back to Not Past It. I have a few of their episodes in my queue right now. I listen to a lot of movie podcasts about, usually about movies I haven't even watched yet because I'm so (laughs) slow at watching movies, but I love learning about them. Um, So I've been listening to a lot of Hollywood Gold recently, learning about Austin Powers. That movie was fascinating behind the scenes. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And then Vibe Check is my go-to every week. They make me so happy. Oh, I haven't listened to Vibe Check. What is it? Oh my goodness. Sam, Zach, and Saeed are like your best friends and they're talking about culture. They're talking about news. So it can get really serious, but they bring the best energy to everything that they're talking about and they have the best friendship. And They must be like this in real life because it feels like the most authentic version of themselves is coming across in the show to the point like anytime I'm in a bad mood and if I put on that show, I immediately feel so much better no matter what. They just, they really bring good vibes. I cannot get enough of that show. That is a strong endorsement. Okay. (laughs) So I could go on all day. Sorry. (laughs) I know you really could. So tell besties about your newsletter because you have a whole newsletter recommending podcasts. Yes. Yeah. I realize that I have too many podcast thoughts and I should probably be documenting them somewhere. (laughs) So I started Podstack. That's on Substack. And the idea is to celebrate great audio and to just help more people discover great audio. So it's to welcome new listeners, but also to celebrate the creators. I'm trying to do a bit of both as best I can without making it too overwhelming and still making it fun for me because I am doing so many podcast things every week. This is kind of my passion project for podcasts because I just, I need to get it out there when I listen to something really good. So I've done a piece about Vibe Check already and good sport, actually. So, (laughs) Yes. So sign up for Podstack. Yes, that is right. You should definitely sign up for Devin's newsletter, Podstack. There is a link in the episode description. And I have an exciting announcement. The show has 23 ratings on Apple Podcasts, 23 five-star ratings, 
And we also got a few new reviews. So I want to take a second to shout out the BFFs who took the time to leave five-star ratings and reviews. So first up, I want to shout out Kate Lavender, who has a show called Lizzie Borden Audio, the only show that recreates Lizzie Borden's trial testimony from the beginning of the crime scene. Ooh, okay, that strikes me as something I would like to listen to and probably will because I have a minor Lizzie Borden obsession and this sounds right up my alley. So maybe you want to join me? I got another review from EF underscore CK pod and it's love this pod exclamation point. I listen to a lot of podcasts and I love this one. I love Courtney's approach, voice and her knowledge. Oh, I love that. I don't know who left this, but if it was you hit me up and I will shout you out proper on the next episode, but I really appreciate your review. And I also got a rating and review from Angie Griffith. Interesting fact about Angie is Angie is in the middle of a rebrand. She actually has just launched the new version of her show called Podfluencer Society. And she is going to be on Podcast Bestie telling us all about the rebrand. And I'm so excited. So look forward to that and check out her show. So thank you, besties, for leaving those ratings and reviews. You can do it too, bestie. All you have to do is go to Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star rating and review. Just say what you love about the show and you get a free shout out. You can just put your name and your podcast in the review or you can email me and just reply to the newsletter with a screenshot and I will shout you out on the episode. So that is basically a free earned media opportunity just for leaving a review twice in one episode. Incredible. (laughs) And now back to my conversation with Devin. Okay, so I'm doing this thing and I'm asking everyone to audit me. So I have private parts unknown about love and sexuality around the world. I have the bleeders. It's about book writing and publishing. You are on Podcast Bestie right now. (laughs) Is there anything that you see, you know, looking in where you're like, oh, I think you should try this. I think you should do more of this. I think you should stop doing this. Do you have a little assignment for me? Oh, I think I'm honestly always very impressed with how good you've been about continually reminding people of your content because you put out a lot of good resources and it can be overwhelming for people, but you're really good about like reminding people about it in small chunks so that you talk about a newsletter maybe for a whole week because you take parts of it throughout the week to post about it. And I really, really like that you do that. And I think for all of that, the biggest thing that I'm looking at these days is making sure that all of that content is accessible. So things like alt text when you're sharing Mm -hmm. images and stuff like that. I know transcripts are really hard, but like welcoming in all different kinds of consumers for your content is something that I have learned a lot about over the past year through accessible podcasting. I actually teach a micro-credential about it. Oh, really? So, yeah. And so once you kind of realize all the barriers that could be out there for audiences that might really love your content, you can't help but try to improve those. It takes a lot of different steps sometimes, but every step you take gets you closer to it just being part of your workflow. So I would say maybe auditing a little bit for accessibility. And if anybody is ever viewing your content in any way, what are the barriers that might exist and how could you provide something so that they can consume the content in whatever way works for them? Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's like a lot to just produce the content, but I have been trying, you know, like on my website now I've gone in and I think I've done alt tags for like 90% of it, but it's been a whole process. Like I had to go in and literally for over a hundred episodes for private parts unknown add alt tags. So it was like, you know, it took me like at least a week to get to that point and I still have a few left. So I would love a few tips in that kind of space. And I'm curious your thoughts. Cause like I'm such a perfectionist, but I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I have to have a transcript out, even if it's not my perfect transcript right away. So like, even if it's Trent and it comes with a disclaimer that it's like not perfect, 
Like I have to start doing that piece. Is that gauche to put out a super rough transcript like that? And like, what are ways that people can kind of get started on their accessibility journey? Because like you said, sometimes it can be a multi-step process. Yeah. As far as providing a transcript that is less than perfect, everyone has their different thoughts on this. And I think if you are at least providing something, you are taking a step in the right direction and you at least have that content somewhere where you could go back to it and clean Mm -hmm. it up. So the fact that you have it already, you're like halfway there. You just need to tidy it up. I think that that is really helpful. And I think even just making sure the access to that is really, really straightforward. Because Mm -hmm. even for me, when I'm writing about a show or researching a show, a transcript is so helpful to have to make sure I'm quoting people right and making sure I'm getting the information correct. And sometimes it is so hard to just find where the show is providing that transcript. So that's also half the battle sometimes. And then as far as your general accessibility, I think the biggest thing is probably through any promotion you're doing on social media and stuff like that. So adding the alt text and just keeping in mind that alt text is supposed to be pretty short and concise. Mm -hmm. And if you find that you're posting something that is longer than that, then you need like a longer description and it's not necessarily alt text that you need. You just Mm -hmm. need to describe the image. But alt text can be really straightforward. It's just thinking like, what does a person need to know in order to understand the context or get why this image is here or this piece of content is here? Mm -hmm. So I think understanding that can help. And even I'm learning more things about accessibility on social media for podcasts every day. And I love, love, love seeing podcast apps and hosting sites adding more features to support the consumers and to support the creators. Because I think that's also a huge, huge piece of it that hopefully we will get more support all around to make it easier for everybody. Well, this has been really great. Is there anything else you want to say to the besties before we wrap? You said this at the top of the show. I think like at Tank, we really believe how creative marketing can be and we really do have so much fun with it. So always pay attention to what is making you pay attention to a promo, to something you see on social, what makes you click, what makes you hit play. Pay attention to those behaviors because then you might learn something more about your audience. You'll get a little creative about how you can reach that audience. Like there's so much creativity in figuring out that puzzle and working with other podcasts. So I think just kind of try to change your mindset about what marketing is in podcasting because it's way more fun than it is in other industries. I don't know that for a fact, but that's just (laughs) how I feel about it. (laughs) Totally. Thanks so much for tuning into Podcast Bestie and a big thanks to Devin. Make sure you call 1-844-POD-AT-ME and leave a message. Let's get Devin back to work on the next episode. I would love it if we left so many messages that they did an all Bestie episode. So let's leave those messages. You've got marching orders, Besties. And if you heard last week's episode, Gary Arndt recommended sprinkling in some shorter episodes to make it a lighter lift for listeners, especially people who are new to the show. So that's why I wanted to drop something under 30 minutes on the feed this week. So let me know what you think. Were you more likely to hit play? And check out Gary's episode for way more generous advice from his journey to 13 million downloads for everything, everywhere, daily. And check out my other podcast, Private Parts Unknown, which is about love and sexuality around the world, and The Bleeders, about book writing and publishing for more of my audio creations. And you can follow me between episodes at Courtney Kosak. That's K-O-C-A-K on Instagram and Twitter. And I send out lots of newsletter exclusives to my besties. Podcast Bestie actually started as a newsletter. So of course, make sure you're signed up for Podcast Bestie on Substack. That is podcastbestie.substack.com slash welcome. Until next time, happy podcasting. Bye besties. <laughs>